Because of production and pandemic related delays, it has been six years since the James Bond film came out, the longest gap between movies and the franchise since 1995. But the wait is over, and today No Time To Die gets its premiere in the UK, a week ahead of the worldwide release. So to celebrate the return of Bond to the big screen, me and a group of other Bond mad YouTubers have come together to present to you the Bond is Back series, a playlist of video essays looking at some of our favourite moments from the Bond franchise. It's the perfect way to get hyped for Daniel Craig's final outing as 007 and share with you everything that we love about this franchise. Make sure you check out the other videos in the playlist link below, and then go see No Time To Die because James Bond is back. So with that out of the way, I have chosen to look at the opening scene of The Living Daylights. In my view, Timothy Dalton's first outing as Bond has the best pre-title sequence of any Bond film. If you haven't seen this movie, don't worry, there's no spoilers other than for the first scene, which doesn't really count. If you have seen it, then you may think me calling it my favourite Bond pre credit scene is a controversial call. To be fair, it's definitely a close run thing, especially when compared to some of my other favourite openings like the raid on the base in Goldeneye, the stunning Mexico sequence in Spectre, or the truly iconic parachute jump in The Spy Who Loved Me. But for me, The Living Daylight's opening takes the cake because it sums up everything I love about the Bond series. It takes us to an exotic location, sets up the plot, delivers a spectacular action sequence, has a brilliant score, and introduces us to a brand new actor's take on the James Bond character after Roger Moore dominated the role for 12 years. Oh, and it does all of this in 007 minutes. Now, I'll be the first to admit that The Living Daylights isn't the best Bond film overall. I love the car chase, John Reese davies and how much the whole plot feels like a proper Cold War spy thriller, but I also think the plot gets too convoluted in the second half and the ending confrontation with Whittaker is a clunky epilogue after the Afghanistan plane fight. Plus, like lots of older Bond films, some things haven't aged well. Don't think. Just let it happen. But Timothy Dalton is an absolutely brilliant Bond, and despite some of the flaws in The Living Daylights, I still think its pre-title sequence is perfect. So let's take a look at it. The scene opens on Gibraltar, a British military base at the entrance of the Mediterranean Sea. M quickly delivers the necessary exposition that the three 00 agents are there on a training mission to infiltrate the base. They parachute in, and here we have the first little detail about this introduction that I love. It's not immediately obvious who Bond is. Remember, this was the first film in 12 years to have a new Bond actor, and Timothy Dalton was fairly unknown when he was cast. So we have this element of mystery because we assume that one of the first two people that we've seen here is Bond. I mean, this guy even looks like George Lazenby for crying out loud. It's only after the rope is cut that we get this hero shot of Timothy Dalton, and just like that, we know that he is Bond. But now that we've seen Bond, the filmmakers had a much bigger task, convince us that he's up to the job. Moore's portrayal was beloved by a generation of fans, and since Sean Connery's debut in 1962, audiences had only ever seen two new Bonds, one of whom didn't even make it past his first film. So the pressure was on to make Dalton the definitive Bond. And that job fell to stunt coordinator Paul Weston to deliver a stunning action set piece. We decided we had four minutes to make Timothy Dalton a new Bond. Bond quickly deduces that the killing of 004 isn't part of the training exercise, then sees the Russian agent steal a Land Rover. <laughs> This is where the scene really gets started, and where Weston's stunt coordination begins to shine. The music kicks in and perfectly sets the pace and energy of the forthcoming chase, as Bond sets off in pursuit on foot. Bond leaps onto the car and clings onto the roof. Now we've seen this sort of thing in Bond films before, and we have seen it since, but this isn't a runway in Miami or a wide street in San Francisco. This is the edge of a cliff. If he falls, it's game over. Oh, and like all Bond films, these stunts are all done for real. Weston has said that Dalton insists on doing as many of the stunts as he could, including some of the Land Rover ones. He proposed tying Dalton to the roof for safety, but that would have limited the actor's movement too much and would also have been too risky if the vehicle had rolled, so in these scenes he's not even wired on. Weston said later, I knew Timothy was strong enough to do the stunts, but it's still a 1300 foot drop down the side of a mountain if anything went wrong. The car smashes through a checkpoint and here's where the 80s action movie logic comes out to play. The soldier shoots after them and ignites the explosives in the back of the Land Rover because of course there are explosives in the back of the Land Rover. It raises the stakes of the fight and gives us a new sense of danger and urgency. Bond gets into the cabin, and again the tension goes up a notch as he starts fighting the agent in close quarters. See, because Dalton was the first actor to really do most of his own stunts, it allowed the camera to get right up into the action and allow Dalton to really sell the physicality of the scene. There's a realness and an intensity to this fight that we haven't seen in a Bond film really since Connery's run. The Living Daylights was the gritty reboot two decades before Batman Begins came along. 
The fight and the chase continue until, almost with no warning, the stakes get dialed up to 11 when the car smashes off the edge of a cliff. Bond pulls his reserve chute and escapes, leaving the Russian agent to explode in midair. Man, <laughs> 80s action movies were awesome, but the scene isn't over yet, because remember, this might be an 80s Cold War action flick, but first and foremost, it's a James Bond movie. We've just seen Bond in a gritty, violent fight to the death, so of course, and please pardon the pun here, there's only one thing left for him to do. It's all so boring here, Margo. There's nothing but playboys and tennis pros. If only I could find a real man. Dalton's entry to the boat here is the first time we have seen him speak, and like the action sequence, his rough, stern delivery of his first lines again marks a clear break from Moore's suave, smooth portrayal of Bond. I need to use your phone. I should call you back. Then he delivers his famous introduction almost in passing. Who are you? Bond, James Bond. Exercise control 007 here. I'll report in an hour. And in doing so, he absolutely takes ownership of the name and the role. And at this point, who are we to doubt him? But then comes possibly my single favourite Bond moment ever, and the line that for me absolutely confirms Dalton as Bond. I'll report in an hour. Won't you join me? Better make that too. We've had serious, gritty, stern Dalton, but in just a moment, he suddenly flashes a smile, turns on the charm, makes a quip, and blows off exercise control because, well, he's James Bond and he's on a boat with Cal Tyler. It's just the perfect way to end the scene and leads into one of my favourite Bond songs ever. But if I play any more of that, they'll copyright claim the living daylights out of me, so I'll just link to it in the description. Timothy Dalton was absolutely brilliant as James Bond, and I wish he had been given the opportunity for a third film. His first ever scene as Bond is one of the best sequences in the entire franchise, because it reminds me that there's no one thing that makes Bond special. What makes Bond special is all of the distinct elements working together perfectly. The locations, the action, the humour, the characters, the music, everything. The franchise doesn't always get the balance right. Like I said earlier, even The Living Daylights doesn't always get it right. But when the Bond films do find that perfect balance, well, nobody does it better. <laughs> I can't wait to see No Time To Die, and I'm so glad to have been able to share some of my love for this franchise with you and the other channels who participated in the Bond is Back series. Make sure you check out the other videos in the playlist, they're all great, and I'll see you next time.